So this is um, the first concept that um, my company, White Motorcycle Concepts, have done. We formed the company to explore uh, some aerodynamic innovation, uh, which is commonly seen in four wheels in sort of sports cars and F1, ducting and an aerodynamic advantage for the flow of air through a vehicle. And it's something that isn't really explored much in, in motorcycles. And uh, normally it would be really difficult to do this, but with the transition to electric, it means that there are less packageable dependencies. Um, so what I mean by that is like a combustion engine, you would have pistons, rods, crankshafts, cylinder heads, inlet valves, inlet manifolds, an airbox, and everything would form a stack up of mechanical parts within the center of the motorbike. So when we look at this bike, the only two things on an electric bike, well, the only single thing that really needs to be close or near the wheel is the electric machine. So on this bike, we've got an interim powertrain, we're just running 100 kilowatts of total power at 60 volts. We've got two 30 kilowatt motors which sit in the back and they drive through a, a chain which is enclosed in the rear swing arm. And that's done on purpose to try and narrow the rear of the bike to clean up the aero all the way to the rear tire. On the front, we've got quite a complex piece. And that is, uh, we don't want any front forks uh, for our aerodynamic concept. So we got those out of the way and we run hub center steer down from the top, uh, top, of the, top of the bike. And then inside the front wheel in the center, we've got hub center steering. So we've got the, the kingpin or, the, or, you, or you would call it, you know, the headstock. So the headstock axis is, is straight in the middle of the wheel and that and the uh, rake is controlled by a top control arm. Then there's a twin spar front swing arm, which then we've got the, the headstock in the center, two wheel bearings on the outside. Then on the outside of that, we're running two 20 kilowatt motors. The outside of that, two 340 mil discs. We, d we wouldn't really use those um, for land speed racing, but we need it in the UK because we can only run on runways. So we have to stop or take off, there are two options. And then on the outside of that, we've got a uh, bespoke front wheel, um, which is all the, all the wheels are made by Dymag. And then what we've got then is we've, we're basically on this bike, in the lower half of the bike, we've chased the aero right from the, the, the start of the bike, um, right from the start of the bike, all the way through to the rear. Um, and then our main innovation is that we've kept the duck, the, the, the bike looks artificially high, but it actually isn't. It's got the same seat height as an R6, and we wanted to keep it keep it like that because, you know, a, a generic sports bike needs a centre of gravity relatively high so that you're able to change direction. So we keep the seat height at the uh, the same as an R6, and then we uh, the area between the underside of the rider's bottom and the frontal area of the front and rear wheels, we've got powertrain and batteries sat within the two wheels and then we sit the rider on top uh, slightly uh, the rider sits in a crouch position uh, and then the air which normally creates a center of pressure at the front of the bike the air travels straight through the bike or, or around and what we've done is we re re reduce the frontal area of the bike significantly but the, the 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 drag form of the bike has improved disproportionately to the frontal area and we think that's because any piece of air that hits the centre of a bike normally has to move several several centimetres around to find a clean path around the bike. Whereas the leading edges on our duct, you know, the air only has to move 10 or 15 millimetres before it's in clean stream to run straight through the bike. So we slightly compress the air the, uh, um, at, at the centre and that's based on the, the fact that we're doing a high, high speed. Uh, the section is smallest um, in between the rider's knees and under the rider's bottom and then we exhaust it slightly out the rear and upwards um, so that we can create some downforce for traction and, um, and then we try and get the air exiting the duct at speed to match the, air of the, uh, uh, the speed of the air that travels around the bike. So what came out of this concept is we were trying to create a new, a new aerodynamic concept based on the packaging freedom that you have with electrification. This is a radical application of what we designed. We chose to go big. And um, by removing the center of pressure off the front of the bike, we've actually shredded about 70% less drag uh, from a conventional bike, but we've got six times more downforce on the front wheel and one and a half times more downforce on the rear. So we've got 
a massive reduction in aerodynamic drag so the bike can go really quick and we've created the wheel load to drive both the front and rear wheels. So MotoGP use wings for many different reasons but one of them is, is, is um, to load the front tyre and we are able to achieve loading on the front tyre without any aerodynamic wings. So what we've got is quite a radical riding position. Um, the upper torso is actually very similar to a Motor 3 position, so we try and get the, the back as flat as possible so we can keep the airflow going out, uh, coming off the front screen onto the helmet and down the back and onto the rear of the bike so we lose as much, uh, uh, as lose as few losses aerodynamically as possible. And then because it's electric we've got the throttle on the right bar, we've got the front brake on the right bar and then we've got the rear brake on, on the left bar and that is it. Uh, we monitor the motors on this powertrain. This is front left, uh, front right, rear left, rear right. Um, and, we, and we just monitor uh, the amount of energy they're deploying, the temperature at the RPM that they're running at. Um, then we've got uh, control cables that run down from the, the headstock and they rotate through the bike uh, and down to, and down to the, 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 uh, the upright at the front. Um, so the bike... It, the bike's intention is, is to demonstrate an aerodynamic concept um, and the best way to do that is go as quickly as possible. So drag, uh, drag increases at the square of speed, so if we can show the benefit of this concept uh, then the best thing is for us to do is go as quickly as possible. So we're, we are looking for an electric land speed record. We've got an interim powertrain that's working well. We've got about the same horsepower as a 600 and we're braking 200 miles an hour with this bike currently. We're looking to move the bike from about 100 kilowatts to 350 kilowatts. And then that will, that will mean then that we can run some big, much bigger numbers in terms of speeds. Uh, it's difficult to run those speeds in the UK because we've only got access to 2.2 miles of runway. Ideally, we would run over six miles. So probably the States or Bolivia would be the place to stretch the legs on this bike. Uh, so the problems of the bike is, um, you know, engineering is all about compromise. Uh, so there are a few things on the bike that are compromised just because we're looking for straight line speed. Um, so the riding position is difficult, but it's manageable. You know, we're only at top speed for probably 20 seconds on a run, 10 or 20 seconds on a run. So we're able to hold that position relatively easily. Um, and then other than that, the bike is set up really lazy. The rakes, it's got a lot of rake in the bike, so the steering's really slow. Um, and that means that slow speed stability, especially out of the paddock here at Goodwood, is difficult. But as, as soon as you're into sort of 50 to 100 mile an hour, the aerodynamic load starts to come on and the bike runs as straight as a die. So this is our first concept using the aerodynamic duct and we've gone really extreme with this and we're trying to go as quickly as possible and the end goal on this is to just to go as fast as we possibly can. But as we've realised through the development of the bike we've created a massive step change in what's possible through reduction in aerody aerodynamic drag and in this it's, it shows it demonstrates itself in speed but we've been developing and working with the UK police force to use aerodynamic technology to reduce their CO2. Um, so our next concept um, that's out running in the UK police force at the moment is we've got 20 uh, detachable hybrid that we've developed a detachable hybrid, hybrid battery uh, solution and we've got a detachable hybrid single cylinder Yamaha 300 uh, and, we, and the UK police force are using that. We've put the duct in it um, so that we can reduce aerodynamic drag by about 25% in that application. Um, so the UK police force they use it and it and it sort of it's a it's almost like a you know three pieces of hybrid technology. We run the combustion engine all the way through the speed range from pull away. We run the combustion engine combined with the electric motor from pull away up to uh, about 40, 50 miles an hour, and then we start to bleed the EV out so that we don't just exhaust the batteries and uh, and it's. At that point that we start to bleed the EV out, that the real aerodynamic drag starts to be produced on the bike. So uh, that's above 50 miles an hour. And then we run on combustion and aerodynamic efficiency up to about 100 miles an hour. Um, and that isn't a fast bike, but the drag at that speed is still significant. And it means that with a combination of 
EV assist with batteries and motors, the combustion engine and the aerodynamic duct, we can reduce the CO2 of that application by about 40-45%, uh, which is significant.